time to travel back to this blast from the past, all the way to 1995, where Damon Wayans played Major Payne, a tough, no-nonsense, combat-loving Marine who loves nothing more than going into battle and killing. However, after getting discharged from the military, he's assigned as a drill instructor to a group of junior cadets, where these kids have to endure his no-nonsense training and harsh treatment. But through the harsh tactics of Major Payne, could he grow to become more understanding and find mutual respect between himself and the cadets? So it's time to go back to the little engine that could, as we explore 10 things that you didn't know about Major Payne. So let's check this out and hope that some of the facts that I got from IMDB are actually factual, because if not, you're probably going to be expecting me to say sorry. I'm sorry you're just a little turd that can't hold your liquid out in public, and you get on out in my face while I pick you up and toss you out that window. You know, you remind me of the dough boy. If I poke your stomach, we'll make you go. <laughs> Number 10 Major Pain is a remake. Major Pain is indeed based on a 1955 comedy movie called The Private War of Major Benson, which starred Charlton Heston. It's about a tough, no-nonsense soldier called Major Barney Benson, who, due to his unruly theories and complaints, which clash against the military bureaucracy, is assigned to help shape up a group of boy cadets at a military school, or lose his job. And just like Major Payne, at first Benson is disgruntled, but soon learns a mutual respect of the boys. And also just like Major Payne, he even has a romance with a female member of staff at the school. The movie was a box office success and earned its scriptwriters Joe Connolly and Bob Mosher an Academy Award nomination. Surprisingly, if you can believe it, Major Payne wasn't the first remake of this military school tale. Nope. Nine years before Major Payne in 1984, there was a TV movie called Hard Knocks, and the main character in question was now a fighter pilot who went by the name of Joe Knox, and was played by Robert Conrad. And the movie also featured Alan Ruck, aka Kyle from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Number 9, directed by an iconic boogeyman. So Universal Pictures distributed The Private War of Major Benson and thus owned the rights to the story and wanted to make a modern 1990s take on the tale. The screenplay was co-written by Dean Laurie, who previously co-wrote Jason Goes to Hell and would go on to help with the script on Jason X, as well as helping to develop the 2019 Harley Quinn animated series. The directing duties of Major Payne were given to Nick Castle, who previously directed The Last Starfighter, The Boy Who Could Fly, and The Dennis the Menace movie. However, his biggest contribution to pop culture was playing Michael Myers in the original Halloween. Yeah, Major Payne is indeed directed by Michael Myers himself. In fact, that first Halloween movie, as we all know, has a sequence with Michael Myers attacking Laurie Strode in the closet. I wonder if that's where the joke about the little boy saying the boogeyman is in his closet gag comes from. You know, a little wink and a nudge. He's in there. If he's still in there, he ain't happy. Forget Freddy versus Jason. We should have had a major pain versus Michael Myers. Yeah, now that's a versus I can get behind if I ever saw a versus of all versus. Number 8, the original choice for pain. So as I always say with my show, a vital component in regards to major pain was who could play the movie's main lead of Benson Winifred Payne. Now according to IMDB, the original choice for the part was Martin Lawrence, but he turned it down in order to star in Bad Boys instead, so Damon Wayans was subsequently cast. Wayans had previously starred in the sketch show In Living Colour, and in the 90s his movie career was starting to take off, with the likes of The Last Boy Scout and Blank Man. 
Wayans even contributed to the script of Major Pain. And I think that Wayans created a very funny character, where he played the part like a comical authoritarian tough guy. Where he may be an expert when it comes to military combat, he's absolutely clueless and not very smart in other factors of life. <laughs> Complete with gold teeth and robot dance moves. I also find it funny how Pain is just addicted to war and going out and killing people. Even when he's daydreaming about living an idyllic domestic life with a family, he is still killing someone. <laughs> yep, that's Payne's idea of the perfect life. Having a loving family in a nice house while still being able to get into some combat and killing bad guys. <laughs> and let's not forget, of course, about his policy of referring to the boys as turds. Which I oddly think he does out of affection. Weirdly enough. Now on. You are no longer turds. You've graduated to maggots. Number seven, Damon Wayans' preparation. Not only did Damon Wayans have to get the comedy element down perfectly for the character of Payne, but he also had to perfect the military aspect too, of this hardened Marine who is a perfectionist of discipline and order. A tough, war-battled soldier who is going to take no crap from these kids. Well, in order to prepare, Waynes took part in weeks of DI qualification training, as well as General Marines training. Like, he really wanted to make sure he had the militaristic side down to a T. Yeah, he literally trained to be a drill instructor, complete with mannerisms and how to walk and talk. In fact, Wayne's son, Damon Wayans Jr., said on the real daytime talk show that his dad really got into character, and every day when he would come home after doing some filming for the movie, he was still in character as Major Payne, and would even train his son, making him to do push-ups, with Damon Wayans Jr. stating that he was probably the most ripped eight-year-old. Yeah, maybe he got into character a little too much, but it totally works. You get all that effort and energy on screen. Number 6, Filming Location Most of Major Pain takes place at the fictional Madison Preparatorial School. The facility used is actually the Miller School of Albemarle, a boarding school built in 1878, which is located in Charlottesville, Virginia. Now, if while watching Major Pain, you feel like the school looks familiar, that's because this school was used in fellow boarding school movie, Toy Soldiers. Yep, that's right. The school used in Major Pain is the same school as the Regis High School in Toy Soldiers. The location has also had minor filming done in other movies, including Morgan Stewart's Coming Home, Cry Wolf, and a short film called I Have Love In Me. It's all pretty cool. Just as long as the students know that the school isn't going to be taken over by terrorists or have major pain stomping around calling everyone a turd or telling stories about the little engine that could. Number five, other casting quirks. So there are some other cast members who I think are worth mentioning. Remember that one cadet who Payne tells him Well, that's right, he's not his brother, he's actually his uncle, as the part of Deke was played by Damien Dante Waynes, Damon Waynes' real-life nephew. The really neurotic cadet, Williger, was played by Chris Owen, who would go on to play Sherman in American Pie. He even appears on the movie's poster. Heck, he's the second thing that stands out after Waynes' crazy-looking face. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air actress Karen Parsons stars as Payne's love interest, Emily Walburn, who tries to teach Payne to be more sensitive. Sensitive. And finally, there's Michael Ironside. Now, he got third place billing in the credits, even though he really only has a cameo, where he plays the abusive step-parent to the Alex character, where he tries to bully and assault Alex, and Major Payne steps in to protect his cadet, and put this guy in his place. This is actually quite a serious scene compared to the rest of the movie. Seriously, the movie goes from comical hijinks to an abusive, alcoholic parent. And Ironside plays the part dead serious, making this encounter even more disturbing and upsetting. But you know what? I'm glad this scene is here. It evolves the Payne character from being a quirky cartoon character who eats rats in his bedroom because he misses killing and turns him into actually quite a heartfelt character. One with depth and a caring soul. 
and this scene in general pushes the movie beyond just being a wacky comedy caper and adds more heart and sincerity. So I do think it's a great and important moment in the movie. It also helps to build the bond between Payne and the cadets and shows that he actually genuinely does care about them despite thinking that they're turds. Number four, the trials of being a bald child star. In order for the child actors to star in the movie, they had to shave their heads. And in order for that to happen, they had to sign a contract, which allowed them to star in the movie as long as their heads are shaved bald. According to Waynes, there was one child actor who really didn't want to shave his head. But when he was told that he had to be shaved in order to star in the movie, he dropped out. Waynes was also advised to do method acting when it came to interacting with the child actors by staying away and not engaging with them when the cameras weren't rolling. So they wouldn't see him as an actor, but a real drill sergeant. However, these kids more than knew who Waynes was and they really wanted him to perform his homie the clown skit from In Living Color. And Waynes did eventually befriend his child co-stars even when the cameras weren't rolling. Major Payne also features the memorable line See now what we have here is a failure to communicate! This line actually comes from the 1967 Paul Newman movie Cool Hand Luke. What we've got here is failure to communicate. Well there you go, I did not know that. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Number three, one cast member could have been a classic comedy veteran. When it came to the Dr. Phillips character, the oddball butterfly catching head of the school, the production really wanted Leslie Nielsen in the part. Now that would have been interesting, just don't call him Shirley. But Nielsen ultimately wasn't interested. Probably because he was too busy making Dracula dead and loving it at the time. And if so, then him not being in major pain was for a good cause, cause that film rocks. Director Nick Castle ended up casting veteran actor William Hickey because he really liked his performance in Christmas Vacation, and so that was that. Speaking of other actors, there's a scene where Payne refers to one of the cadets as Ace Ventura on the account that he has a blind dog. You know, there ain't no pets allowed on these here premises, Mr. Ace Ventura. It is said that this is a callback to Wayne's and Jim Carrey's working relationship, as they both previously starred together in In Living Colour and Earth Girls Are Easy. Wow, what a blast from the past that one is. Number 2, Deleted Scene. Now there is a strange anomaly in the movie's trailer, a blink and you'll miss it moment, where we see a sequence that actually isn't featured in the movie. It's a shot of Payne setting off the cadet's sprinkler system in their bunker, presumably in the early hours, while yelling out, Rise and Shine. His methods may be madness, but now they're learning. I'm guessing this was probably part of the training montage, but it was cut out from the final film for whatever reason. Adding deleted scenes in movie trailers was actually quite common in the 90s and early 2000s. Heck, it still even happens now, and some scenes in some movies are purely shot just to be used specifically in their trailers. The trailer for Major Pain also featured some alternative takes, like the as mentioned failure to communicate scene. Just to recap your memory, this is how it looked in the movie. And this is how it looked in the trailer. Why on earth was a different take used for the trailer? Who knows? Maybe it was to get a good headshot of Damon Wayans, you know, to just let everyone know that he's in the movie. Also, in the trailer version of this scene, he refers to the cadets as ladies, whereas in the movie version, he does not. Yeah, either way, weird. Number one, Major Payne was a huge hit in Germany. Major Pain was released in March 1995 and it made $30 million on an undisclosed budget, with Major Pain actually making $5.5 million more than Billy Madison, which also came out that year. Wow, both Major Pain and Billy Madison being released in the same year. What a time to be alive! God, take me back to that time, please. According to IMDb, Major Payne skipped cinemas in Germany and was a straight-to-video release. But despite that, it would still become a huge phenomenon in that part of the world, thanks to frequent TV broadcasts. 
I genuinely think that Major Pain is a very funny movie, and Damon Wayans gives a very spirited performance where he can be really mean and tough and possibly borderline cruelty, but oddly still really lovable at the same time. And his humour and energy does carry the movie. You can tell that he went all out and just immersed himself in the character of Pain and was living and breathing that character, just like his son said. The funny thing I noticed when watching recently is how my perspective of the movie has shifted. When I watched Major Pain as a kid, I totally felt bad for those boys and I was on their side. But now that I'm an adult, I can kind of see things from Pain's perspective. So when he says to the Emily character, Maybe what he needs is for you to pop your t*** out of his mouth and let the boy grow up. I think I kind of get where the character's coming from, although I wouldn't have worded it like that. But I can kind of see the method of his madness. This idea of, you know, for God's sake, let these boys go, stop wrapping them up in cotton wool, and let them get out there and grow up. By the way, I guess that line is where the PG-13 rating comes from. But that said, Pain must also learn to have a more emotional, sensitive side too. So I guess the movie has a message of having an even balance of nature versus nurture, and how it's healthy to be both tough, but also kind and caring at the same time. You know, nurturing. In other words, a bit of both is good. The Emily character has to toughen up her world lens a little bit, but on the flip side of that coin, Pain has to also get more of a caring paternal side. Or maybe I'm just looking too deeply into the psychology of Major Pain. Either way, it's a funny movie with many memorable quotes. And what's not to love about that? Okay, that was my look into Major Pain. A movie where most of the cast is bald. Finally! A movie that I can really get behind. Anyway, I'm Minty. And if you're ever struggling, just remember the little engine that could. Chugga 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 chugga. Doo doo. See ya.